Hey Rockstar's Def here. Off the back of yesterday's video about my thoughts on the new patch and new patch say meta basically is the conclusion of it. I'll link that video in the top right of your screen for you right now. Go and check it out if you're interested to see my subjective thoughts about what it means. But broadly speaking, the summary of that video was I think that mobility is going to be absolutely key in this patch. It's going to be absolutely critical. And for that reason, I'm bringing to you today a Firestaff build. Now, Firestaff is not a, 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 something I've played very much. Um, I played it maybe like five OPRs total before this patch dropped. That's how little I've played it. Um, I was a tank originally, then went into heavy IGVG, then transitioned to medium IGVG predominantly. So I've not really been a light player traditionally. In fact, I, the only time I really played light was light sword and shield warhammer, so not light mage. But despite that, just to show you how easy Firestaff is right now, I went into an OPR yesterday and went 21-0, and 1 million damage, and that was not stat padding at all. That was absolutely just selecting targets. The guy who got number one when seven kills eight deaths i went 21 kills zero deaths so you can see that you know damage is being rewarded i'm not playing meteor shower because meteor shower is bugged right now and i don't believe in playing the bug but i will show you both builds just in case because everyone's running it I, you know everyone's running it so you're not at really any detriment i just personally wouldn't do it because i think when fire when meteor shower gets bugged i would always go back to this build which is burnout rather than meteor shower but anyway I'm going to show you that. If you get a lot out of today's video, make sure you like and subscribe. It helps me to continue to make new world content. Make sure you check me out on Twitch where I stream my OPR and wars. Twitch link is in the description below. And if you want to help the channel, you can make a rogue energy purchase. It's an excellent energy drink. And you can use my partner code Death Metal to get 20% off your purchase. Let's get into today's video. Okay, so I'm just going to put that image of the scoreboard up on, on OPR. but And then I'm just going to show you the build really quickly to show you how suboptimal all of my armor is. And I can get those results against some really high quality opposition. I mean, if you play in EU, you'll recognize some of the players on that scoreboard. And I was absolutely farming. So I just want to show you what the build looks like. Now, I, I have a really terrible build. It's basically shirking heels gear from PvP track. Because I want to stack refreshing. Refreshing is really nice. And um, I would like elemental version, but I don't really have elemental version refreshing resilient gear for light. So I just stack shirking heels. And this goes back to the point I was saying in yesterday's video. Mobility is the key. I don't really I didn't really need damage mitigation perks on this build because all I did was I tried to play line of sight, I tried to play close to cover, like playing a bit of an FPS. So if you have an FPS background, you have to play the light meta the same way this season, I think. You play close to cover, you engage, if you're getting targeted, you fall back behind the cover, you recover, maybe you flank and you go again. And that's the way that has to be. Now, if you get chased by a light melee, you can probably punish them in most instances because you can dish out so much damage. And there was a couple of times where I had that meme pop into my head where it's like, call an ambulance, but not for me, because literally I was half health getting chased. I'd wait till my abilities were back up and I would just unload fireball light into pillar, into burnout, and they would melt. It's like, you can't even really push with that build. It's very difficult to do so this patch. And then all the other light fire staffs and bows jump on that guy pushing anyway. So I don't really think you need too much damage mitigation, but I do think if I was thinking meta, I will tell you what I think for meta build for this looks like in armor perspective afterwards. But I just want to put it in perspective. You don't need... The best gear to be able to get a lot out of this build that's how powerful fire staff is right now um but i'm all shirking heels refreshing i am light i am 12.7 weight i am resilient physical version sturdy energy so that's a two perker at best um, i'm absolutely getting nothing from sturdy energy whatsoever on this build um but physical versions you're decent to have against the bows of course i do have abyss amulet the flame protection amulet i'm playing champion's ring i'm playing another refreshing so i have five refreshing on this build but I have no weapon perks here. You know, I really would like Refreshing Pillar of Fire or Empowering Fireball. Um, and then I'm playing Wildfire Torch, which is just an OPR drop. Empowering Fireball, Enchanted, Kingly Empowered. I think that's very, very good. I think the accepted BIS for Fire Staffs is not this. We'll get into what that looks like later on. And then I'm just running my Healing 2, my score on it. That's the one defensive perk I really did like on this build. Kingly Jagged and Chain Lightning for Fast Heart Rune. And then Cannon. And again, we can talk about a little bit of that. So this is just a high-level overview. Let's look at the skill tree that I'm running right now. And I'm running 300, 200. Um, and that was absolutely fine. Some people suggested going 150, 350, um, as in 150 in con, 350 intelligence. I didn't feel like I needed that. My damage output was absolutely fine. On the fire staff, this is what one iteration of the fire staff tree could look like. And I've got to give some credit to people in my company who helped put this together. And I largely copied it. But basically, you don't need the weapon perk. Uh, you don't need the last perk on Pillar of Fire, which is the max mana. This is a very mana hungry build, but you will get used to playing around it. So much so, in fact, that when I was safe, I was actually popping ice to him for the mana regen. Uh, you could put mana pots on your on your bar if you like, and probably instead of running hearty meals, you could run the mana regen food as well. So there's a couple of ways you could absolutely boost this as well. 
And same for this one, the direct hits, um, giving you fire staff for CDR. The CDR is a lot on this build anyway, so you don't really need catch, and it allows you to take some other passive perks that are really nice. But you do want everything on burnout because this is really nice and it synergizes quite nicely with detonate. I'll explain why in a moment. Um, and then I don't take backdraft. I think backdraft powerful, but then you have to take either flamethrower or incinerate. I'm not a flamethrower enjoyer at all. I know many of you will be. I'm really not. I think it's a lower skill play style. I'm not going to say low skill. It's a lower skill play style that I don't particularly enjoy. And even though it's a bit similar to tanking in many ways. And incinerate, I also don't think it's bad. I think it works in the right play style. But you, you know, this traditionally pyromancers are traditionally medium or heavy. Perhaps you could get away with running this. And this isn't something I would run because I'm too squishy to kind of get in and incinerate a clump. So not looking to do that. Meteor Shower I'm not taking because it's bugged. And when I say it's bugged, it's the weapon perk is bugged. And why is the weapon perk bugged? It's bugged because it's basically every time you're getting the dot tick on the singe, you're getting the empowerments. You can get to 10 times empowerment, which is 30% empowerment, I think, on the weapon perk, um, basically instantly uh, on a cast of Meteor Shower. So yeah, then you're doing that and then you're popping Pillar of Fire, Fireball, and you're just melting everything. So it's very powerful. Again, that's what number one leaderboard got, but it, you don't need it to be effective, right? I'm running this, and I went 21-0. Uh, Rune of Helios is really good, by the way. So what Rune of Helios is, is when you place a Fire Staff ability, you get this rune around you. I'm going to show you what this looks like now by popping Fireball. There's my Rune of Helios. See my empowerment that came on the screen. And that's a 20% empowerment that lasts for seven seconds. Now, my one tip with this is don't use it... I mean, you're going to, you, you can play around proccing it. Of course you can. But don't be sat in it all the time. Don't be afraid to leave your Rune of Helios. You can get back in it if you like. But the worst thing is, I feel like I just played around this when it came up. And I didn't sit in it at all cost. Because some people sit in it at all cost because they want the Empower to maximize their damage. But actually, just playing around it was much nicer. So I could put it down here, retreat into cover, and go back inside it when I wanted to do some damage. That was a much better way of playing it, I felt. And it lasts for 7 seconds, cooldown's 30 seconds. So you're roughly having up for about a quarter of the time, something like that. So it's quite a nice quarter of your time you can be spent in Rune of Helios. Then some of the passives, basically all of the passives on this skill tree focus on DPS. So Flare um, is now an AoE, so that means your Sword and Shield tanks, you can use this against them. And basically just a splash AoE damage and they won't be able to block it. And also if you fire this in a clump, you're going to hit lots of targets in the clump. So always heavy attack with your fire staff. If you can light attack, I tend to always heavy attack with this play style. Crit damage increased by 15%, extra crit strike chance, uh, extra damage on clear casting, smolder stacks is extra damage when you hit them, 5% empower when you're above 50% mana, heavy attacks reduce fire staff cooldowns, which is why I'm always heavy attacking, 10% damage against targets with a smolder, that happens all the time. Um, you have to take heat up to basically get to the rest of the tree. I don't think it's an amazing perk, dodging for an enemy melee attack, but it's half decent, and it's better than let it burn because... That 10% Fortify actually counts for Invigorated Punishment. You'll end up taking more damage if you take Let It Burn than Heat It Up. So you just Heat It Up is to access the rest of the tree. Smolder for a bit more dot damage. And Crit Hits also giving Smolder some more stacks. So you can basically get to five stacks. And you'll be seeing the playstyle video I'm putting on the screen now as I'm talking. And this was on a bit, this was on an OPR where I didn't do particularly well. It was just had footage I had available. It's so easy to get five stacks of Smolder. And it ticks for like 150 a time. Five stacks of that. That's like a tick for 450, 500 damage a pot a second. It's, it's, it's nutty. It's really nutty. So that's what one version of the skill tree looks like. Let me show you what the second version, if you do want to play Meteor Shower, what that second version of the skill tree would look like. And here's what a second version of the tree could look like. There's a couple of things you could think about. I don't think the grit is needed on Meteor Shower at all. You could take catch instead of something else if you really wanted to for a bit of extra CDR. But broadly speaking, this is far more aggressive because you don't have Burnout, and Burnout does save my life a lot. On a build where I don't have much damage mitigation, Burnout's really nice. But if you had a more tankier build, perhaps less refreshing, more elemental version, and you wanted to, to just burst Meteor Shower into everything else, then you could think about running this as well. That could work. Um, I put both versions of the tree there so you can take your pick. I'm a much, much, much fan, a bigger fan, sorry, of the first one than this one for the reasons I've explained. I think Meteor Shower is going to be powerful even when the perk gets fixed. But it's not the place that I'd like. It's a bit less burst. And I think Burnout is just really, really powerful from a defensive perspective. Okay, and then I'm pairing this with an Ice Gauntlet. Here's what my Ice Gauntlet tree looks like. It's fairly traditional. There's, I need to test this. When I tested this on PTR, this was new Ren. But some people are saying it's old Ren. So I really need to test this. Sorry I haven't tested it for you in this video. But if this, new, if this is old Ren, you probably want to take this. I still think Ultimate Chill might be worth taking because it's so powerful. 
But do you know what? This perk, the heavy freeze, now it just feels so dog. When I mean dog, I mean it feels bad. And the reason it feels bad is everyone seems to have like fire freedom almost. I, I don't even feel like I'm rooting targets half the time. Really weird. So I got to say, because I don't, because the, my fire staff heavies are so much better than my ice heavies at the moment, I might go back to taking this perk and taking a bit more passives here and dropping ultimate chill. But for right now, because I'm focused on damage with 300 in light, I've taken this build, but I'm not entirely set on it. If you want to see what my other ice gauntlet build would look like, I'll link my IGVG medium guide. That will show you what that would look like as well. You could, of course, play something like Blunderbuss Mortar Build. You could play Blunderbuss something else. I think, from my perspective, the reason why Ice Gauntlet Firestaff is more optimal than Firestaff Blunderbuss is the defense on Ice Gauntlet is so much better than the defense on the Blunderbuss. And the reason for that is because if you have Entomb, Shower, and Burnout available, it's very difficult to kill you. Very difficult. Imagine you're getting focused. You Ice Shower, trap them in the Ice Shower. You can then dodge away. If they start getting close, you can burn out away. And if they're getting close still and you really need a heal, you can heal into him, take the heal and go away and purify yourself. There's actually three super strong defensive abilities there. And at worst case scenario as well, you can also use Ice Storm defensively as well, right? Drop it on, you create the slow and you move through it while they're slow behind you. That's a heap of defensive, mo of defensive mobility. Whereas if you run Blunderbuss, yes, you could run Nest Shot, you can run Blast Shot, but Blast Shot, a lot of enemies, a lot of enemies that are pushing you might have grit now. And a lot of enemies with net shot will help, but it's just a one time, you know, one person benefit. Whereas Ice Shower will hit lots, Ice Storm will hit lots as well. And you don't have the benefit of the Purify on Ice Tomb. It's good, but I don't think it's going to be meta. I think IG Firestaff is definitely the way to go. Okay, now what am I going to recommend in terms of the meta then? I think probably if you could get Resilient, Refreshing, Elemental version, that would be amazing, by the way. I don't think Freedom's going to do you too much. The reason why Freedom isn't going to do you too much is even if you get caught by a stun, you're probably going to die quite quickly with the build with the way all of the fortified changes have happening, and you probably want to then switch to your Ice Tomb immediately to try and get out of it. So I don't recommend Freedom on this build particularly. I think Refreshing would be better. I think if you manage to get to 8 Refreshing, which is Refreshing on all uh, jewellery and all gear, and you have Refreshing Pillar of Fire on your um, Fire Staff, you can infinitely cast Refre Pillar of Fire if you hit two targets with it. It's literally, there's a clip around, it's just boom, 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 boom with Pillar of Fire. And Pillar of Fire is great because it's basically unblockable because it comes up from the floor. So that's one way of doing it. Of course, you do have to run suboptimal gear. I wouldn't recommend that. I think probably four refreshing, five refreshing is going to be absolutely fine for you, even if you get six refreshing on one of the jewelry pieces, something like that. Like you can put it on your earring quite easily. You probably wouldn't want it on your amulet for the defensive bonuses you lose. But if you have it like, you know, every second, that's still super powerful, right? So I think the accepted meta at the moment is refreshing Pillar of Fire on the Fire Staff, keenly empowered because you're going to crit quite a lot and that's 15% empowerment. And then people talk about either Enchanted or Vicious. Now let's talk about the benefits of those. Vicious is going to impact your abilities. It's going to make your abilities burst better. Enchanted is more dependable because you're going to get it on every heavy attack rather than needing to crit. I think, I think from my perspective, Enchanted is slightly suboptimal to Vicious. Vicious is better. But if you got Enchanted, you'd be delighted either way. It's going to be a fantastic build as well. With the crit damage on the skill tree, you're going to be doing crit damage anyway, and it's going to be really, really powerful. Then because you've got Pillar of Fire on the weapon, you probably do want Empowering Fireball on the gear. It means you have to open with Fireball, which is a little bit different to some Firestaff's playstyle. A lot of people closed with Fireball. I mean, they used it to get the chasers away because the splash was so big, but some people are using it now to open. If you want to get a lot of the armor perk, you're going to have to be have to let it be your opener, probably. Um, I don't think you need the burnout perk, particularly. You could take the burnout perk if you like, but I wouldn't recommend it. Then meteor shower perk. If you're going to run meteor shower, you do you should take it. It's the benefit of running meteor shower for the empowerment and you're playing around that. As I say, it's bug right now. So yeah, elemental version on the gear, refreshing on the gear, resilient would be kind of bis with minus the armor perks. I would probably knock off. I would probably maximize the refreshing. And if I have empower and fireball on here, take that. In terms of Ice Gauntlet, I think Healing Tomb is great. You could go Deadly Frost if you wanted, or you could go Unending Thor. Unending Thor is also nice as well. I'd probably put Unending Thor on the gear, Healing Tomb on the Ice Gauntlet. That would be super nice. You could have three Elemental Aversion, five Refreshing, Weapon Perk, Weapon Perk. Flame Protection or Thrust Protection, and then you gem up accordingly. I mean, this is what my um, stats look like right now. It's because it's sub-optimized. I'm specking into Fire Damage Resist. You can take Fire Absorption Pot and maybe spec a bit more into Thrust Resist if you want. With this build... The main playstyle tip you have to recommend is always play around line of sight breakage. So I'm talking trees, fence posts, forts, stones, boulders, anything like that that you can use to break that line of sight because that's going to allow you repositioning, health potion up, wait for your cooldowns to come back, 
They're probably going to flank you to get an angle. You just have to watch them flank in the opposite direction. You can either disengage if you like by finding your next angle to approach from, or you can re-engage at better health and a better position to play in. That's going to be the way to go. Typically as well, it really helps because when you're low, enemies will try and boost, burn through all of their abilities to finish you off. So if you actually can disengage, heal, re-engage, they're probably going to be on cooldowns for their abilities and you can actually nuke them a little bit. It works super effectively. Now, the only thing to talk about is Heart Rune. To me, there's three Heart Rune choices. Stalwart Stoneform, which is the one that gives you a heal. It's about a 1k heal if you pop it and it gives you Stoneform benefit. That's pure defense. You can run Cannon. Cannon I really like because I think it, I think it deals with this playstyle quite nicely. Or the other one is Brutal Detonate. Now, Brutal Detonate can be good. And the reason Brutal Detonate can be good is imagine you find an opportunity. Is there a clump right there? You can, if you have Detonate, you can pop Detonate. You can pop Burnout into the clump. Explosion on the Burnout. Explosion on your Detonate. It's huge burst damage. Very, very aggressive, of course, but it is massive burst damage. That's one way you can play it. So that's Stone Form. That's Detonate. I really like Cannon, actually, and I run Brutal Cannon. Now, the reason I run Cannon is because most people know when you've spent your abilities, right? So you Fireball... You pillar of fire, you're hitting, you're hitting, and then people think, right, this guy's got nothing left. And then you go bang with the cannon and they just don't expect it. And they go, oh, okay. And then they die half the time. You can hit it into clumps as well. If you want to finish off a big clump, it can lead to some significant clump wipes. Pretty easy to get a multi-kill when you fireball, pillar of fire, okay. cannon. Really, really powerful. Problem with detonate in the in the burnout is most people expect it coming now. So they either, you know, they're gonna iframe you, they're gonna stone, they're gonna entomb, they're gonna do something like that. So they're gonna potion up, they can see it coming. Um, all three are viable options to me. You take your preferences to what you pick. I have a lot of fun with Cannon at the moment. A lot of people have fun with Detonate. And a ton of people absolutely have fun with Stoneform as well, just for the defensive. Allows them to be a little bit more aggressive on their position as well. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Just again, wanted to show you that my gear score is not optimal. All the gear is not optimal. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, look, is it the best? Is it good? Is this... Do I make this video so everyone can go fire stuff? No, I don't. But in reality, if you want to have some fun in OPR as a solo player without a healer, you're going to have to play Bow of Fire stuff. I just don't enjoy anything else right now. If you can't beat them, join them. Um, don't hate the player, hate the game, all of that good stuff. At the high end, of Fire Staff is a very skilled weapon. In the hands of a skilled player, um, it can be super effective. So there's going to be lots of bad Fire Staff players around, and there's going to be some exceptional Fire Staff players around. I don't fall into the exceptional category. I've not played it nearly long enough. I fall into the probably above average Fire Staff, and even I go 21 and 0 for it. That shows you how busted this weapon is right now. Um, Hopefully this video lasts a little bit longer than my 54,000 shot caller build video, which I'll link in the top right of your screen for you right now if you're interested in how you could have got to 54,000 khp. But AGS nerfed that video almost instantly. Let's hope we get a little bit longer on this. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I do want Fire Staff buffed, uh, nerfed before then. I probably do want it nerfed before then, to be honest with you. But hey, so be it. As always, if you enjoy the content, like and subscribe. Help us to continue to make new world content. Make sure you jump into Discord, Twitch. All of those links are below. And until next time, everyone, stay safe. Keep rocking.